It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Buck Bait, Limb Walker Game Calls, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, Scent Blocker. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight on a beautiful Thursday evening here in mid Michigan with Dan DeFall. What is going on? Ugh. This weather is a changing here and there, and it's looking good. It is. It is. It, we're, it's going to be better next week. It is going to be better next week, and we're into March, so let's... You, you know, I, I, I put my hand up to my ear, and I hear a distinct little faint gobble off in the distance. It's not that far. You know... It's coming. It's coming. It is coming. There's no doubt about it. Times and weather are a changing. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get into it tonight, man. Let's, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We do get a lot of stuff, but let's talk first about our supporters that support us. And the first one that we want you to help us support is uh, Buck Bates. Nothing better than going over to buckbaits.com. And if you want 20% off your order, use the promo code Up North Journal, and you can get 20% off your order. But that's not all. But that's not all. A big shout out and a safe travel to Lincoln Roan over at Packer Max because he is on his way to the Iowa Deer Classic. Iowa Deer Classic, correct. And if you want 25% off your order when you order a Packer Max from him, give him a call or go to the website packermax.com. Tell him UNJ25 and he'll give you $25 off your order. All right. And need a call? Need a mouth call? Turkey season's coming up? It is. Nothing better than going over and seeing Paul and Amy over at jpogamecalls.com and get uh, 10% off your order if you use the promo code UNJ10. I have one more, but we're not going to talk about it yet. No, but I do have my JPO game mouth calls right here. Yes, you do. Mine are sitting on my desk at work, too. Got them ready to go. So, drinking a little bit of coffee tonight, too. You're drinking coffee. We got the mouth calls. The only thing we don't have is, is like, something to cook. Well, you know, it won't be long. We'll be doing some grilling. I mean, it, it is getting to be that time of year, I do believe. Right? Well, why don't we just get into it, man? Let's do it. Introduce them. Well, we ta- we, we, we kind of teased it last week that we were going to have somebody on here from Oklahoma. Yes, and we do. But we do. Dave Bosca from Wild Seasoning from Wellston, Oklahoma, is joining us tonight for the show. Welcome, Dave. Welcome yourself. I appreciate the invite. <laughs> so what is going on in Oklahoma? I mean, you're a long way away from, from Michigan here. So, I mean, we, we did talk about this a little bit before we started the show, but but you, you actually got a little snow out there here recently, I do believe. Yeah, we was part of that crazy um, Siberian weather that came through here in Oklahoma. I mean, right now it's probably averaging 60 degrees, but about, let's see, about two weeks ago, we had negative 14 degrees and about 12, 14 inches of snow. And let me tell you, for us down here, that is way too much. I would say so. But you know what? That 60, come on, man. You're killing us. Right? <laughs> it was like 33 to here today. So, <laughs> and windy. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> oh. and, and for people watching on the live stream, uh, you look over Dave's shoulder and you, you see a bow sitting there. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But that's right. He, he is into archery and he shoots a PSC. So, this is going to be really good. Uh, a quick shout out Jim Stephan says April 20th, or Turkey season opens in Wyoming. So when does turkey season open out there in Oklahoma? Just as a quick question. I'm thinking we're about 30 days out or better. Okay. Yep. All right. It's coming right around the corner. You know, and if you were to shoot a turkey, you need to cook it, right? The, absolutely. That's and, what we want to talk about Right. We, we want to talk about wild seasoning and what all you have to offer. And But we're going to kind of first learn about the man Dave himself. You know, there's nothing better than finding out the owner, operator, and a, and a world champion barbecuer. That's what I've heard. Yeah. So he's got to tell us how he how he ended up getting into the seasoning business. So where did you start with this this whole seasoning and barbecuing and uh, grilling and all that? Well, barbecue was kind of my second passion. In all honesty. I've got 34 years in the meat business. I've owned, operated meat processing plants, worked in retail, wholesale, did slaughter, and I've, I've done all of it. And that's that's my history. My family lineage is bricklaying. And I know when I was 14 years old, working with dad in the summertime, 
I didn't want nothing to do with that. That's hot, hard work. <laughs> so I had to find something that I could do. Um, and so I kind of got into cutting meat at a local grocery store and I just fell in love with it. And ever since then, I've kind of owned my own place. Um, we still did the farm killing. We do all that. We started out real small. We got, actually got pretty big and got into doing wild game. We, we were doing, for us, it was a lot because we still had our farmers we had to take care of. But we were doing between four and 600 deer a year. And we got to know a lot of people in it. And we were making eight to 10,000 pounds of summer sausage. And then we'd make bratwurst and snack sticks. And, oh, my gosh, just all kinds of different sausages for the wild game. And, gosh, we have processed caribou, bear, um, Neil guy. Um, we had some hunters from Africa come in. Uh, and then obviously all the little things you can imagine. And we would make pheasant sausage, goat, uh, goose sausage, duck, um, everything you can imagine. We, we got into it. And I shot archery, got into it really heavy. I traveled all over the United States shooting lots of different archery. And I actually broke my back, hurt it really, really bad. I was, I was under the weather for about eight months to a year. And those old male competitive juices were still flowing in me. And being in the meat world and having smokers in the shop and doing hams and bacon and then all the sausages we'd learned to do over the years, I actually seen an article that was talking about doing a competition barbecue. Well, I thought, you know, maybe I could do that and kind of step into that world equal with other people. Didn't know if I'd ever get a, I say, step in ahead of anyone, but equal. And we did. And let's see, it's been about 12 years later. We've won over 100 different state championships. We've got two world titles. And a year and a half ago, I decided, let's get back into what brought me to the show. And I started wild seasoning. I wanted some sausage seasonings, bratwurst seasonings, and what I call topicals, the stuff that goes um, on the exterior of the meat that will help and flavor wild game. And it be the flavors that we've got into in barbecue. In our competition barbecue, it has to be a one-bite um, taste because they'll take a bite of a brisket and that's it. You're not eating a plate full of meat. So how we made all of our venison sausage and what we've got now is flavors that you're not going to find in a big box store or any of the mass retailers just by the sheer types of flavors we've got. The flavors are bold. They're right up front. They're in your face. We love that. We wanted the type of quality of seasonings that honor the time that the hunters put into the woods and their hunt itself. We wanted them to be able to get those flavors back out of it. And ultimately, being I, I hunted in the past a lot. I don't hunt now much at all. I don't have time, really. But... I understand that if you're the hunter, if you're the wife of the family or the husband of the family, whichever one hunt or they both hunt, whatever, if the opposite one doesn't hunt and doesn't like the flavor of that animal, you have less chance to get to go. So we <laughs> right? developed all of our different flavors to allow the hunter something that would allow the cook in the family something to use that gives us more chance to go. Absolutely. Simple as that. Well, we've got a few of them here to, to look at. And I, I tell you, the first thing that really caught my eye, Danny already knows which one it is, is the desert dust. I got to imagine that's, is that got a little kick to a little heat? Absolutely no. No, really? I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. Okay. I've got, no, I don't have one of them back behind me. See, no, the desert dust is that, that it looks like charcoal for lack of better words. It's kind it's of great. A, yeah. A, if you open it up and taste it, it will blow your mind right here on screen. It is. All right. And while he's doing it's, that, it's, I think I'm I got not, one. I'm not going to say what I get out of it. Because everybody on their palate, they get different things out of different flavors. Okay. People get sweet. They get savory. Some get heat. Um, I'm very sensitive to heat, okay? Okay. But I, uh, I, I, I pick up savory like crazy. Um, but sweetness, I don't pick up a lot of sweet when I'm eating. Uh, who's who's trying it? Danny or Mike? Well, well, Mike, Mike. I, I got the desert. One. I've got the desert dust here. I grabbed the habanero and mango flavor bratwurst mix. That's hot. <laughs> well, that's why I, I, I that's why I grabbed it because I know Mike is going to go for this one because it's got habanero in it. Okay. Uh oh, Mike. Mike tasted it. This is good. Uh, <laughs> give me a spoon. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's oh, hard to describe. It's really it's hard. It's got a citrusy. It's got lime. It's yeah. got some different things in it like that. So, so that's what it is. So, okay. expl so explaining what you said, the especially when you got into the competitions, right? It, it, you need to give them the flavor in one taste. Wow. And yeah. and and the, that's kind of the backbone of where you you go with these seasonings, right? This desert dust. That it, 
Go, go ahead. I, I, I'll say this afterwards. Go ahead. Answer his question. That is absolutely right. Because, like I said, we go with one bite. And I wanted something to where you could sprinkle it on lightly or heavily. And it's not going to overpower with salt, overpower with sugar. But the flavor is just going to be intensified if you want more flavor. Just like one of the summer sausages we have, which is my favorite. And that is the New Mexico Hatch Chili Summer Sausage. I actually use that a whole lot in making Mexican dishes. Okay. Well, I want to say, you, you're talking about the desert. You, you mentioned the, the lime and the citrus in it. I got to imagine this would be really good with, with like, uh, seafood or fish, uh, you know, uh, freshwater fish, things of that nature. It really is going to go good on anything, probably. It's really good on fish. We have fell in love with it on duck breast. I was going to say chicken, My maybe son, so some fowl. Yeah. Yeah. My son's a big duck hunter, and that that is kind of what we did a lot with the different ducks that he would bring in, and that right there is was was my my thought process with it. Well, let's take a quick step back a little bit. You said two time world champion. Uh, what was it? What was the title? Pitmaster or barbecue? We barbecue champion. Barbecue we champion. Have won the yes in 2012. We won the world food championships in the barbecue. It was held out in Las Vegas. There was. I don't know, a hundred other different cooks from all over the world. Um, we ended up um, beating a chef from the Paris, somewhere from Paris. Don't make me lie. I don't know where it was from. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, um, six or eight episodes of that on the Discovery Channel, different places like that. We did a, I cook on pellets. I'm a pellet cooker. And so we also did a little deal for the History Channel. And it was called the history of and the future of barbecue. And I obviously, I was the one cooking for the future. Like pellets is revolutionary. Um, but I, I got to do a little bit for that. And I don't even know if that ever made it out of the cutting room floor. But we did do something for them also. Okay. Well, I got to ask. Okay. So you, you said you, you're a two-time uh, champ, world champ. What did you make? In these contests, we cook chicken. Okay. Uh, ribs. Smoked pork butts and brisket. Okay. The second world championship was in 2018. It was held down in Tennessee at the Jack Daniels Distillery. I know where that's at. Not far from my home uh, homestead <laughs> or home place down in northern Alabama. Wow. I, Danny, don't, don't pay attention. We're just back here sampling <laughs> while you're We're talking. We're letting you talk. <laughs> we do have one question that, that, that's come across the okay. live feed. And what would you, uh, out of your flavors, what would you recommend for turkey? Oh, well, that... To me, I'd put a first, I like on, on turkey chicken, on the first layer, I'd put a thin layer of the wild addiction. I love that wild addiction. If you try that on the show, you're going to see what I mean. But I'd put a thin layer of the wild addiction. And then I, w I would probably put uh, the either the Timberline Rub or the Mountain Stream. The Mountain Stream is designed for the seafood, actually. It's got herbs and rosemary, things of that nature in it. And then the Timberline is probably the closest to a standard barbecue type rub. But either one of those two would make a great topping. It's just according to what you're trying to get out of it. If you want a traditional Thanksgiving style, I'd put the um, Wild Addiction and probably step back and do our campground seasoning, which is a hickory-flavored seasoned salt. And that's what I really like about the campground is we use that a lot with fried potatoes, um, baked potatoes. Um, heck, I like just doing it with popcorn and even fried eggs, but that campground yes. seasoning is Oh, we're going to get around. along just great. <laughs> As I, I've, I'm always trying stuff on popcorn and my eggs and on vegetables. Oh, yeah. I think people are missing out yeah. when they don't. But I will yep. say the habanero's hot. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> but good. I had to sign a disclaimer. Yes, Woo! man, that's well, good. That's the thing. Let, let's just call it what it's. It's a habanero and mango. That's yeah, right. I right. Was testing it. You should get a mango flavor up front, and then the habanero steps oh, in. It does but step in. Should... It stepped in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, that's good. Yep. And I do like, I, I like a little bit of spice. Uh, I like putting that stuff on, like I said, popcorn, you know, spice up some popcorn. But yeah, that that, that had a nice, had a real nice kick to it. And actually, Jerry Lambert, who's asking about turkey, try some habanero mango on that. I think I'd do it right. Make that turkey The thing hot. with the, like the habanero mango you're speaking of, that's what, that's in our bratwurst line. And we've got the others, the smoked apple wood. Um, seasoning, the beer and bratwurst, the herb and tomato. The thing with bratwurst, I don't want people to be scared and think, oh, I don't have all that equipment to stuff it into um, casings and go grill a bratwurst link. 
the thing that's great about that is bratwurst can you, you just mix it right into your ground venison your ground elk whatever you have make a patty and you want to talk about make the best gourmet grilled patty by adding these type flavors and you don't have to stuff it you don't have to do that you can make a bratwurst patty and just go grill it nice okay hey i got a question here for you before we're going to go to our first break here we'll run just a little bit long but uh our buddy jim out in wyoming he says because of where he lives he says that he uh he loves antelope but a lot of people out there hate it because they don't know how to process it correctly what would you recommend putting on antelope antelope with it being as dark as antelope is i think the timberline would work really well with it i think that'd be a great one the desert dust is is going to be too citrusy for me for my personal taste okay but i i think the timberline would be absolutely i'm sorry timberland i keep saying line the timberland rub i think that would be great for like on the back strap and things like that okay we've got a bunch of questions coming in here i tell you what let's take a break uh we come back uh, we got something here on smoking. We got smoking. We yeah. got, uh, well, just so everybody knows, uh, also, wild seasonings can be found with our friends at Deer Camp at their brick and mortar store in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Or they can go to wildseasoning.com and check it out. There you go. I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to step outside and we come back. Uh, I want to get into, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions here about wild game meat, but I want to talk about getting it prepared maybe. Since you're a butcher or a former butcher and, and preparing that or preparing it in the field uh, or field dressing it properly and getting it to the table. So we'll talk about that when we come back. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back to the second segment of the show. We've been sampling more of the oh, have different we been rubs sampling? here. Oh, man, I tell you what, it's good stuff. So um, before we get into anything, um, just so we can show and, and tell everybody that, we, you know, the reason why we're having Dave on is we're also uh, striking up a partnership with Wild Seasonings for the year. So from now on, uh, Dave and Up North Journal are going to be partnered. And courtesy of Dave, he's offering a promotional code for our viewers. What is that, Dave? U N J. Wonder what that stands for, right? U N J. Twenty twenty one. There you go. That's pretty easy. And you'll get ten percent off your order when you check out. So there you go, folks. Uh, quick question before we get rocking into this segment here. Okay. Uh, so do they have? Do you have sample packs, or do you have to just take the whole bottle? I mean, somebody's looking for maybe two or three different little sample packs to try. No, we don't have sample packs, and that has everything to do with the volume that we do to mix it. Gotcha. The We, we mix it in 500-pound mixes, and that comes off of a certain line. All of our sample bag stuff comes off another line completely, and it's just 500 pounds in sample packages would be about 20,000 little one-ounce sample <laughs> packages. And that just that just doesn't comprehend in a business mind to go, I'm going to give away this. Doesn't fit but into the business that model. Is, <laughs> well, it's I'm just afraid this the, the product's going to go stale. And then it doesn't do me any good as someone sampling something that's stale. Right. I, as a as an end user myself, I, I wouldn't want that. It could so go it could go I, wrong I more that, than it could go right. Right. Exactly. So no, unfortunately, we don't. You know, and one of the questions coming uh, coming through uh, is how long is it recommended aging venison before processing it? Processing it. That's a wonderful question, and I'd say aging has a lot to do with the final um, the way you cook it. Okay. I'm a firm believer in aging venison in an ice chest with water. Okay, fill it up a, a lot. Let's say uh, 30 quart, 30 quart ice chest. Fill it with ice water. But what you need to put in there is about a half a cup of salt. Okay, okay. and the reason so is salt starts an osmosis process. And in the venison meat, what we're trying to do is pull out a little bit of the blood mm -hmm. because the blood is what will alter their flavor That for the folks that don't like the, the gaminess flavor. So without the salt, all you're going to do is get maybe an eighth-inch surface 
penetration. But on a cell structure, it takes salt to do an osmosis. And over a week to 10 days, and you have to change it out about every other day or every day, well, probably every day for the first week. After that, you can go to every other day. But add your half a cup of salt in there, just regular table salt, non-iodized. You do not want iodized salt. And then that'll allow the meat to osmosis with the water, and it'll completely clean out that meat and get a lot of that gaminess away. And aging it, then at the end of that, you'll be ready to cut it and put it in your freezer. Now, you said non-iodized non iodized salt. Th- that's pickling salt, am I correct? No, table salt. Table salt works just fine. Oh, uh, table salt, okay. Non-iodized table salt. Okay, yeah. okay. so it doesn't have to be the pickling salt. I got you. Okay. No, no, it doesn't. Well, well, talking about, we're getting some questions coming in here now you, well, about aging of that and, and taking it from the field. What's the most common mistake most people make with wild game? After they they uh, take it and they field dress the animal and they get ready to bring it home, what what do they? What's the most common mistake made? They don't. After they harvest the animal itself, they don't take care of it properly. The one thing that we've seen more than anything is that we would always tell tell the first or the newcomers into the sport take a couple old milk jugs full of water and just use that to wash the inside out of the chest cavity. When you're skinning it, make sure you take your knife to the inside and cut outwards. Because if you cut into the hair, you're going to open up all that hair and it's just going to go all over your meat. Mm -hmm. So go to the inside and cut outwards. Take care of it from the beginning. You will see a difference at the end. And it's everything from getting it washed, getting it cooled. If you can stop somewhere locally and grab a bag of ice and throw in the chest cavity and start cooling it, wonderful, that's good. If you're way out in um, in Oklahoma, it's not way out. We don't have a lot of way out areas. But if you have to pack the chest cavity full of snow, what you're trying to do is get that meat to um, cool the meat down so it doesn't spoil. Because it's the bones that need to get cooled, not necessarily just the meat. And what you're going to find is that pelt on the outside will insulate that meat longer than you think and it'll keep that meat and those bones warm enough and that could start spoiling it prior to it getting cold enough so if you start from the inside then that will allow it to get cold longer i mean quicker but leave the skin on if you if you're going to be a few days still out at your camp and stuff i'm not a fan of removing that skin right off is it harder to remove down the road yes but it actually serves a purpose it does help protect the animal in my opinion absolutely because i uh here up in michigan i travel from the up and that's exactly unless we have to butcher them up in the up i'll bring them back down here with with fur on just because of that fact of protecting it but uh definitely one of the most important steps is getting that cavity washed out yes we got another question here. Uh, actually, it's a follow-up back to talking about the sample pack. He said he was actually talking about a, a multi-pack instead of individuals. You offer them as a multi-pack. Right now, the pricing, we've got it as low as we can go. So if we multi-packed it, it'd just be that item times however many of the other ones you want. So you only have to buy one at a time. Just You can go to the website or, or walk into the Anthony's um, store up there and and just buy what you want, each flavor. Because if we packed them, then you'd be forced to buy whatever we have in the pack. It's kind of like going to the store and buying a, a pack of Gatorade, and you're like, I don't drink those other eight flavors. I got you. Right? Nobody, nobody gets nope. to pick nope. what you want. Somebody doesn't like the blue. Somebody doesn't like the green. Somebody doesn't like the purple. Yep. Uh, I like them all. Right? I do too. <laughs> but, you know, we're looking at the website right now, and it's a very simple website. You can go on there. You can scroll on wildseason.com, and um, you can just kind of – kind of brews what you have to offer but not just seasonings you have to offer at the bottom of the website you also offer casings for those that do it at home uh and have supplies like that yes and even way down at the bottom in the footer of the page we've also got directions and they're printable and I believe I sent some with um, the stuff I, I sent y'all, but it's how to make summer sausage, how to make bratwurst. And we do have that to where it's on a PDF to where you can print it at your house also. Right. You set it up. It, it's, a, it's on a four by six card and it says wild seasoning using the bratwurst mixes and using the mm-hmm. summer sauce mixes, mi- mixes on the other side. So you just follow the instructions yep. that you got here or like you said, go on the computer print out the PDF or bruise the PDF and you got all the instructions right here on a simple card or it's on uh, the computer. I know what we're doing this summer. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to be making some sausage. (laughs) 
you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, the way you've got into this and, and you've become the, 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 the barbecue champion that you have and you are, um, it's one of those things that I see you are going into it and you are just, you know, are you still, you know, I, you've got a lot of flavors already. What's the what's the forecast look like? You got some more coming, or what? What what's the laboratory look like at the kitchen? Absolutely, in this upper cabinet, this door right back here, it is full of samples right now. Um, I'll request something, do this, do that, take it home, cook with it. Now, my next thing that we're going to be getting into, and this is my fault that we're not into it right now. I love summer sausage in our meat shop. We we did a lot of summer sausage. Um, we do we did all the bratwurst. The summer sausage we have can be used for making beef jerky also. In the top of the jar comes the little cure pack that you use to cure the meat with. Now, I need to actually come out with a specified jerky spice. Unfortunately, the world, and I, I'm the same way, when you call it something, no one wants to use it for that. Like if you come up with, a in the barbecue world, a rib rub, people think that you can only use it on ribs. Wait a minute. It's good on chicken, too like mm -hmm. the summer sausage, it can be used in multiple ways. And so I'm actually going to come out. I'm not going to say with a normal because I'm, I'm far from being normal, <laughs> but I'm going to come out with a, a lot more traditional flavors on the jerky, like the jalapeno and cheese type um, jerky spot. Mm -hmm. or, sorry, that's the summer sausage. Uh, you've got teriyaki and you've got just a traditional country style jerky. I'm going to come out with something that... I hate to throw my hand out there, but heck, why not? It's your, it's your podcast. I'm going to flavor the the jerky a lot like what some of the spices are. Okay. Okay. You know what? You, you know you got you always have basic teriyaki jerky and the base, but hey, why not go out there and stretch it a little bit, get a little bit of difference, and step it up. Step it up. And I, I'll tell you, I'm my own worst enemy because I don't like teriyaki jerky. <laughs> so anytime I've played with that for anything, I've had to give it to other people that like teriyaki, but that's not my favorite. Uh, I just can't hardly eat it. It's just something about it. You know, we talked about taking care of venison in the field and what to do there. Turkey season's right around. Is there something special people need to do when they're when they when they get a turkey? Um, it's going to be might potentially be warm. It, it, so, what would you do in in a turkey situation here in about a month and a half? I've always skinned all the turkeys that I've shot. I've I've never been a plucker. <laughs> I, I like skinning them. And but as far as that, it's 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 still an animal. You it, it, you were harvesting it to eat. So take care of it. That's foremost number one well we got a question here Pardon me. Uh, that came in actually yes. last at the end of last segment but uh, a good friend of ours down in west virginia tim sias from lim walker game calls he asked uh what is your recommendation for smoking turkey breast how long and at what temperature okay smoking meat has as much to do with your cooker as anything it's about airflow okay i can get into the real science of this and we can take up the whole rest of your podcast but it has to do with airflow. I can give you a generalization, mm -hmm. and let's just go with that. Let's say around 260, if we're talking just turkey breast, um, if you want to inject it, I, I love injecting um, game meat with for flavors, moistness. I would put the grilling addiction on it, and probably I like the mountain stream a whole lot. I would put that on the outside, and then smoking it around 260 degrees for anywhere from three to four hours. It really has everything to do with your cooker, um, and I hate to be so vague, but has everything to do with your cooker. And you mentioned airflow, um, more, less. I mean, what, what, where do you kind of want that airflow at? If you have an offset smoker. And you're going to run your damper. You need to run your damper. Let that be your inlet and outlet. Get, keep your fire clean. You don't want a dirty smoke running through your smoker. Okay. Um, that's where you get your bitterness. And when you run it, got a dirty smoke going through, um, what it you're doing is you're burning a lot of carbon, and it's staying in your chamber, burning the carbon out of the wood, and it's staying inside the cook chamber, and it sets on your meat. And have you ever ate barbecue four and five and six hours later, and you go, oh, my gosh, I still taste it? Mm -hmm. What that is, that's CO2 in your chamber, and it's not exiting out properly. It's staying and laying on your meat. So you need to get the bad smoke out of there and just allow the good embers and, that's, uh, and the clean smoke to lay on your meat. Smoke is a flavor. If it's on venison loin, if it's if you're grilling direct and you're slicing a turkey breast and you're going to be, be grilling it for like, um, gosh, a, a sandwich. You what, what you what you 
I've drawn a complete blank. Sorry about that. It's all right. What? It, what, it, what, what <laughs> hey, you it's got a, me it's a, now. It's a live show. You're on a roll now. But he, you know what? Why? We'll let you get your get your thoughts out. We'll take a break, and in the third segment, we'll come back and we'll right. pick it up again. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. And uh, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago. But we want to give a quick shout out to M123 FM all the way up in Newberry, Michigan, up in the UP. We're taking a look, live look right now. And yes, Down, downtown Newberry. Downtown. There's there's one car in front of the store there across the street. There's snow on the ground still. Of right. course, it's the UP. And we just missed a car going by. They're not going to believe us because there's nobody out driving it out up there right now. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, that's your live look for... Uh, Newberry, Michigan. So, right. want to thank them for picking up the show and uh, distributing it up that way for us. So, so we've, we're all the way from Oklahoma to Newberry, Michigan. You have to come up sometime. We'll take you up there, and we'll we'll take you to Quamana Falls. Maybe do a little grill there at the camp. I have done. I've done a cooking class up in Michigan before. Really? Where at? Yep. Oh, I, I'll be honest with you. It's I don't even remember. We Something. flew in. It was actually at a gun club. Okay. And a, lo- a local barbecue club um, was putting it on. It actually, it was a store, Great Lakes Barbecue Supply. Okay. They were doing it. And I went up and did it. Uh, it was about 30, 35 people in the class. Okay. Yep. So so you're for hire for teaching people how to barbecue. Have a whole class? Yeah. we I, I put on full culinary um, classes all nice. over. Yep. Well, I think Julie over at Deer Camp should have you up this summer for a Nice yeah. barbecue. Absolutely. They've got room over there. They do. We could hide it right out Tony, there at the back. Tony and table. I have talked about that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Tony and I have talked about that. Yep. Y- you come into town. We'll come down. We'll live stream it, and uh, we'll have some fun. And we'll, and we'll eat. <laughs> then we'll eat. <laughs> uh, Buck Bates there does, you go. <laughs> if Buck Bates does say that, uh, I'm probably going to blow this name, Cedar's Pizza in Newberry is the best pizza in town. That's right. I remember him saying Cedars. Cedars Pizza. So it's probably the only pizza. I don't know. Escanaba is not real big. No, Newberry. <laughs> Escanaba is big. Uh, Tim Sias. Oh, wow, y'all still have snow. Of course, we still got snow. It's Michigan and it's March. We'll have right? snow until April, my friend. Sometimes yeah. May. <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be turkey hunting in. Snow. I've hunted turkey. Yeah, it's sitting in snow. So that's good stuff. But yeah, so you know it. It. it Going through all this and, and what we need to do to prepare the meat and what you got in your wild seasonings. Um, when you look back, where you where you started from, worried about laying bricks for the rest of your life, to where you're at today, did you ever think that would happen? Absolutely not. Um, I know it's coined a lot, and I'm going to say it. I'm truly blessed at what barbecue the meat world has brought to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a wonderful family. My son owns a restaurant just two miles down the road and it's a barbecue stand. I say stand, gosh, don't get me wrong. He's it's, it's a sellout every day type thing. Mm-hmm. We, we cook thousands of pounds of meat every weekend. My wife and I, she's a full blown nurse does all kinds of stuff at the hospital up there where she's at. I run the warehouse here. Uh, my brother works for me. Very fortunate to have that. We have a 50 by 60 warehouse here, stacked 20 foot tall. We've got a 40 by 40 back behind me, and we've got six containers out back full of product. And it just absolutely amazes me the amount of people we have touched in the barbecue world, and that's what we're doing with this wild seasoning. I want to help educate. I want to help bring in the flavors, listen to what's being used and what's liked, and do that. Uh, I just want to morph change just keep growing what we've got going. And I like the road we're going on. Is it going to be the only road? Nope. I promise you we're going to have something else as I learn what is being used out there. Do you have a storefront down there or is it uh, online only? No, you can come in and shop here if you want. You can go to the restaurant and shop. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just if you're anybody down in Wellston, Oklahoma, which is close to what biggest city? Oh. 
Well, all of 1,500 of us, uh, they pretty well know how they can get a hold of me. <laughs> Text me and say, hey, meet me at the warehouse. <laughs> but we're close to Oklahoma City. Okay. We're about 30 minutes out of Oklahoma City. Okay. Well, you're talking about the direction you're taking, about have, helping people to, you know, try different flavors, to, you know, do prepare their meat the correct way or, or a better way uh, to get a, a better flavor out of it. Uh, you know, looking at, at rubs and people, what people use and yours, what what's one of the common mistakes most people make about using a rub or a seasoning on meat not putting enough on it okay um, you're putting it on there for flavor and how many times have you ever seen and this is the prime example that i'm going with is i have never sat down at a restaurant and not seen a salt and pepper shaker <laughs> why yeah because people want to change um, the flavor profile it's, it's well in a restaurant setting it's different i yeah. mean they got to come out kind of middle of the road and people that want it can add it to it but at your own house you find that layer and that the, the levels of flavors you like, and now put it on there. Don't be afraid. And when you apply the uh, flavor, this is what I forgot where I was get going at a while ago. Smoke is a flavor, okay? When you put it on and how much of it you put on your food makes a difference on your palate. Same way with your rubs, your salts, your seasonings. All of that, if you put it on immediately before you put it on your grill, it's going to be a surface flavor. You're going to get it right off, and then it's going to go away. So if you put it on um, and let it marinate in for 30 minutes, it's going to be a little longer. It's going to linger into your palate longer. But if you mix it into your meat, let's say some grind, some of your ground venison, ground elk, or ground bear, whatever your preference is, take some of these bratwurst seasonings, um, take some of the wild addiction, mix it into it, let it um, melt into the meat. Do not freeze it immediately. What you have to remember is all of it, all spices, all spices, dried spices are dried. You have to let them rehydrate before it can get into your meat. That's the reason if you put uh, something on your steak and then go straight to the grill, it's only on the surface. It never rehydrated to get into the meat. So if you're going to take a sausage seasoning or the timberline or anything like that, and you want to mix it into your ground meat, mix it in, let it sit in your refrigerator overnight, then freeze it. That's the old sausage trick in our meat world that we used to do when we'd make breakfast sausage. Let your seasoning set overnight in a, in a refrigerator before you freeze it. Then it melts and it goes into the meat. And then when you thaw it out, it's not little pockets of salt, sage, things of that nature. It is in the meat itself. Let it work right through it. All right. Exactly. So uh, a question coming. Um, what is your go-to smoke? What's your apple hit? I myself, for long cooks, I like pecan. For what I call short cooks, ribs, chicken, things like that, I like cherry wood. There you go. Pecan. There you go. And see, you're getting right into my, my wheelhouse now, man. I, I, knew, that, I knew this was going to be a good show tonight. I love it. It's, again, it's a hungry yeah. show. Yeah, absolutely. So, Well, <laughs> one, one of the guys on here, he says he's putting an order in tonight, so you ought to see an order come through. Don't forget to use the UNJ promo code. That's right, UNJ2020. <laughs> exactly. 2021. So, well, you know, before yes. we get to, we got a few minutes here left in this segment, but before we get to the last segment, because I know what's coming on that one. Yeah, that's right. Um, we, we alluded to this just a few minutes ago, and I, I don't mean to get off track with talking about the meats and everything, but you've got something sitting behind you there, leaned up against a wall. And I'd be a little bit remiss if I didn't ask you, what kind of bow are you shooting there? That is a PSE Citation. Ah, citation. So that means you must shoot a little bit of target as well. And I'm assuming I indoor or outdoor? I shoot a lot of indoor. Okay. All right. Matter of fact, he shoots a lot of indoor. He shoots indoor in his warehouse. Well, from yes. the size of what he was saying, he's got room to shoot there. <laughs> yep. Of course, when the employees leave. When the employees leave. There you go. Uh, that's no, good. they just need to stay out of the way. Yeah. Right? Now, the citation, that's that's new uh, new 2021 that you you got your hands on there? That is correct. What do you think that about it? That is correct. It? I absolutely love it. I love the shoot through riser. I love that stiffness. I have a Perform X also, which is a shoot through, and that was my favorite bow. And I've had, I'm a PSE person from way back. Okay. I've had from 1990 on, I've had the old Carol, Carol Intruder, PSE Fire Flights, Mox. I see, I had a Mox 6, a Mox 7, and a Mach 9. Um, the old solo cams. I had some some of the Mojo solo cams. I've, I'm an old PSE dude by by diehard, I guess you can say. There yep. you go. That's nice. Yeah, I'm nothing better than a PSE fan. Yeah. So you uh, you shoot there in the local uh, the local ranges. Do you travel when you you do your outdoor shoot or your indoor shoots? I I don't travel as much as I used to. Um, this year, or I'm sorry, last 
Yeah, last year I did go up and do the big Lancaster shoot, and I don't usually about the time I get into the, the some of the bigger tournaments are going on, we're going to start cooking. And you know, I can I can make some money at cooking the indoor, the big tournaments that you spend a thousand dollars travel and getting to and all that. Don't get me wrong, I I love to shoot. That that's my second passion. But I'd rather go make two, three thousand dollars cooking. <laughs> well, you got to go with the bread and butter, you know. That's good. That's right. That's awesome. Well, um, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things. You you, you go, you get in your wheelhouse, and yeah, definitely, I get you it. Stick uh, stick with what you know and make money, at it and you'll be all you, right. You you you're back at dabbling in indoor shooting is what you're doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. So you're shooting uh, you're shooting spot faces. I take it indoor. Yeah, I shoot the three space, the three face Vegas, and a five spot NFAA. Okay, well, Danny, he's right there with us. Uh, you come up if you come up here and you wind up over there at Deer Camp, and we're doing some cooking or something here this summer. Bring the bow with you, and we'll we'll take you down to the range that we shoot at, and we'll have a little fun. We're not that, that good. Like we're good not. Idea. We're not that good, but uh, but we like to shoot so. It's all all good fun. That's all that matters. That's right. we, we we like to have fun. That's all we like to do. But I tell you what, uh, let's really? go ahead. You you going to say something? I was going to say then we'll be we'll be right right beside each other cuz <laughs> I definitely am a am a hoot on line. There you go. <laughs> well, that's why we like to have fun. You got to you got to have a little bit of fun on the line and mess with the next guy. The problem is I'm always stuck with Danny right next to me there, so we're giving it to each other both, you know, back and forth, you know. Usually it's him saying, hey, just shut up and shoot. Just be quiet. Quit complaining. <laughs> I'm, his, I'm his mental stability. Oh. <laughs> it's like golf, I, I've heard. I, I don't play golf, but uh, I, I, I see the parallels. Um, you know, you, you try and you try and you get mad and you get frustrated, and that just makes it worse. So that's the way it goes. Yep. All right. I tell you what, let's save the what time we got left for the last segment because I know you're chomping at the bit uh, over there. So. If I don't, I'm going to get it. Yeah, you Tam- Tammy's going to let you have it. So right. I tell you what, we'll step outside and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. And, uh, we got a quick question here I just saw pop up, and Todd is asking, any recommendations for a homeowner, for a home personal smoker that you would recommend to him? All right. Let's start with what's more accessible for your wood. Um, Tony, if you're listening still, which I hope you are, do you have access to full logs or are you more into pellets? Because pellets are very accessible and can cross state lines. There's a lot of states that don't allow wood shipped in due to the wood born beetles. Um, mm. So if, if you can get pellets, man, there is a ton of great pellet grills out there. Um, Traeger, Pit Boss, Green Mountain, the, um, Cook Shack. Oh, I'm, I know I'm leaving some friends of stuff out and I apologize, but if you can get into pellets, it's so accessible. And what I really like about cooking on pellets is that if I'm changing out right in the middle of a cook, I can change my wood and I keep going. I don't have to wait for something to burn down. I mean, just that quick, I can go from cherry, pecan, hickory, whatever you want, sugar maple, and you just keep going. That's awesome. That is. That is awesome. I've noticed that a lot of people, I mean, I'm hearing more and more about pellet, you know, here in the last couple of years. Well, we can do a whole nother podcast on that, but yeah, pellet cooking, you have to understand how to infuse flavor in it because it burns so clean. But, um, and people go, well, I don't get the smoke flavor I get out of wood. Well, you have to learn how to use your machine and it, all it's doing is burning what you're putting in it and you have to learn to use it properly. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that's, 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 um, you know, some people might make that mistake and they get it and they don't know how to use it. And all of a sudden yeah. they're wondering why it's all messed up or it doesn't taste like everybody else says it should. Well, I'll tell you, you know, we're, yep. we're talking a lot about, about food and grilling and, and smoking and everything tonight. And you said that'd be a whole topic for, for another podcast. You've actually got a podcast. Take a chance here. Give a shout out to uh, where you're at and where people can find you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, obviously it's about barbecue and it's called the Butcher Barbecue Podcast. How original is that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're on we're on all the 
the main players in the game. We've been doing it about 14, 15 months. And so, yeah, I'd have really appreciated it. Everyone go over there and like that. We just uh, published another one yesterday. We have one, we have different segments called Cook's Corner where we spend an hour or so, just like what we're doing here. I talk to cooks and help them work through prog- pro- products that they have problems with, uh, cooking a brisket or cooking pork. And then I've also got a whole lot of them that we go and talk to our business people that we do business with and help people bring things to the market, um, being it rubs or how to market products. We I got a marketing on there. We talk to other sauce manufacturers, just any and everything, just like this. We just want to help educate and and bring things to the forefront. That's nice. I mean, you know, you think about it. I mean, you've got a product here that you're trying trying to sell, and you know that's your your income. But you're bringing other people on to help work through problems and and give them a little exposure. I mean, it's kind of like you're all working together. Oh, it's just like it's just like hunting. You know, everybody want, would would think that. Well, I'm not going to teach you how to hunt. Yeah, it helps the sport, but I don't want you after five miles down the road hunting the same animals that I am. Well, if it brings more to the sport, it it actually will benefit you down the road. You just don't realize it. And if you don't think that, or you think you know how to hunt. Teach someone everything, how to read the woods, how to look mm-hmm. at the lay, how to see where they might be coming up a, a, a mile down from you. Why are they changing and not coming my way now? I'm telling you, after you teach someone, you then realize what you don't know. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, there's never true words been spoken on that. You know, we've been talking about venison. We've been talking about turkey, chicken, pork. We have not been talking about fish. If I were to have a fish, a walleye or a pike or whatever that I'm gonna gonna eat, perch, whatever, what would you suggest that I use to put on the fish? Mountain stream seasoning. Mountain stream seasoning. Yep. Matter of fact, I'm I sure just you have got to have one. that right here in my. <laughs> He's gonna try it. <laughs> Mike's gonna try it because I think I tried it already. Oh man, that smells good. So so you're this is this is the the, the one to put on fish. Absolutely. And I actually like that on chicken also. But yeah, fish, that was designed for fish. Wow. That is good. Different herbs. Got the, cist- the herbs. That's right. That is really good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So there you go. Now I now I feel better. We just covered all the, the whole entire <laughs> gamut there. That's I was, right. I, I've thought about that. So now getting in our last segment, it's time for us to ask you some questions that we ask all our interviewees. Now. I'm scared. Easy. This stuff's easy. It's easy. So. Dave is traveling. He's got to go to a, his another shoot. He's decided he's going to shoot at Lancaster, so he's gonna he's gonna drive there. And what is Dave listening to on the radio when he's driving? I am a classic country person. Um, Willie's Roadhouse on the Sears Radio type world, but I'm not into the new country. I am an old fogey. Prime prime country. <laughs> I like. I am I am old country. Um, Conway Trudy, Loretta Lynn, those are about the newest I get into. You like both kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> the old yes, stuff. Sir. There you go. Right? Yes, sir. All right. That's one. Next question. You're traveling down the road. You're listening to, to Conway Twitty. You're listening to Willie Nelson. You reach over, and you got to have a snack. What's your go-to snack that when you're on the road? Probably going to be either beef jerky or um, maybe a pretzel. There you go. Keeping it simple. That's right. And see this next question. I I already know what it is. That's right. But I, and I'm waiting for the answer on this one because I'm right. hungry. Dan and Mike decide we're going to take a trip down to Wellston, Oklahoma, and we show up for dinner. What is going to be the meal that you cook for Mike and Dan? Well, for out of towners, I would probably cook barbecue. There's no doubt about it. What kind of barbecue? <laughs> but if I'm cooking, yeah, yeah. But I absolutely love good Mexican food. Okay. There you go. A good a good Mexican dish. Nice. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. We have finished up that Mexican dish and we are stuffed and we're going to sit around the, 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 the campfire and we're just sitting around talking. Um, and then you're going to tell us a story that comes to mind that's made an impact from the outdoors or maybe even now in your business that has, has impacted your life. What that would that story be? Well, that's a really deep, hard question, and I'm going to have to think about that while the embers are burning. So, while the embers are burning, I'm going to have to think. But <laughs> ultimately, uh, story-wise, man, I I don't know. I guys, that that's a stumper, and I'm sure that's where you get a lot of them. But I just always want to do something right. Um, I don't know of a great story. Maybe uh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, so, so, yeah. so. That, that's actually perfect because we're going to talk and then you're going to turn around and you're going to look at us and you're going to ask us a question. What question are you going to ask us? 
from your list. My question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you grab oh, okay. your list? Okay. I just opened I the door did. for you. See, he does the same thing on, okay. on his podcast, folks, and we just found that out in the, in the right. commercial break. So, so he's got a list yeah. for us. Go ahead. And my podcast is barbecue, so it's kind of food related. And there's mm-hmm. questions that I ask my guests, and since it's food related, we're going to go with name the worst topping that you could put on a pizza. Anchovies, onions. What about a burger? Mayonnaise. Oh, can't stand mayonnaise. I hate mayonnaise. Okay. A baked potato. Hmm. Oh, that's just... A sour baked, cream? I don't yeah, like sour a, cream. A baked potato with just butter is, is yeah. the way to go. Ice cream. Worst topping on ice cream. Yeah. Never thought about that. I don't know. Man, that's a good one because... Are we talking like typical toppings or just anything? It's a good question. I right? question yours, not mine. Well, he gave the question to us, so... It, yeah, I, I got to say probably... <laughs> Probably mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, All right. One one other quick question. That'll be it. Okay. I've got a whole list. Is what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Danny, go ahead. I already know the answer for me. Oh, uh, well, I, I got to think about it. Okay. I off the top of my head, crickets. Oh, yeah. I can't say I've ever done that. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. they're freeze dried crickets. Kind of tastes like almonds, actually. I have no idea. That's a good one. I got me stumped. I have to think I, about that. My That's young- going to make me look at almonds all different now. Right? Right. right? Now, my youngest boy, <laughs> who's not young anymore, he's 21, uh, he's eaten goldfish. They were alive. And he's eaten worms. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He, oh, I, and tadpoles. I take it back. He had some tadpoles, too. Yummy. Yeah. He's not, oh, afraid, wow. to eat, he's not afraid to eat, eat anything. And he loves things hot. The hotter, the better. I mean, ghost pepper, Carolina mm-hmm. Reaper. He's into that stuff. Well, there's a bratwurst seasoning he can try. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, right? Buck, and Buck Bates says putting ketchup on something. Yeah, Inge- I know. <laughs> Ice cream, maybe. Right? It could be anything, you know, neither Tony or Julie. Yeah. Right. But, so, you didn't ask the question I was going to hope you asked. Was okay. If, if a piece of food fell on the floor, how long would you let it sit there? Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the one I yep. like. I was like, come on, ask yep. The golden seconds. rule. Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> Depends on what floor it's Five on. Five second rule. Depends on where it's at. Are we outside? <laughs> is it the ground or is it a floor in your kitchen or, you know, are right. you at a restaurant? How hungry are you? Yeah, if it's if it's somewhere public, it, you know, you don't know who's cleaned it. No, it, there's no, there's, I wouldn't right. pick it up at all. So, well, let's throw it back at you. What about you? Which question? <laughs> how long, if a piece of food fell on the floor, how long would you let it sit there? Not very long. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, that's good. Right? That is funny. That's awesome. Oh, well, I tell you, man, it's, it's man, the hours just went by. It, the hour has flown by, and it's been so nice to have you on <laughs> and, and start a relationship and partnership with you and Jay together and, and with having Tony around close by. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get into some kind of mischief. At yeah, one point. I can see that coming <laughs> coming down down the road here, mm-hmm. definitely. So, uh, but you know, uh, once again, before we let you go tonight, uh, for those on the podcast that are listening, where can they find the seasonings at the promo code and give a shout out once again for your podcast? All right, our podcast is Butcher Barbecue BBQ Butcher BBQ Podcast. You can find that on just about anywhere that you can download a podcast. We're on it and the Wild Seasoning. And it's spelt with a Y, W Y L D seasoning.com. The promo code is UNJ2021, and you'll get 10% off of everything on the order. There you go, folks. There you go. It's live and active right now, so go do some shopping, get some wild seasonings, and tell us how you like it. Absolutely. Yep. Follow us on Facebook. We post we post recipes on the different seasonings, things that we use. Well, I've always coming up with different recipes. We've got some potatoes on there. We've got a meatloaf on there. We use our chili uh, seasoning on in different dishes. So yeah, you can follow us on the Facebook, the Wild Seasoning, and you'll see some of the different things that, that we put out. And if you got a question for Dave, get on Facebook and send him a question. There you go. Absolutely. Well, for those of you on the podcast, that'll do it for us this week. Next week, we've got Tim Sires from Limwalker Game Calls. Yes, we do, and it'll be number 600 episodes. Yep, my 600th episode, so don't miss out. We're going to be talking turkey calls, turkey hunting, everything to do with turkeys. And uh, don't forget, he also has a live show 
Friday nights at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yep. Okay. Seven or eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yep. Eight o'clock. And um, live on the limb. Live on the limb. But make sure you go over to Facebook. Check out his Facebook page because sometimes that that night will change depending on if the guest can get on Friday night. But typically it's Friday night. Right. Absolutely. So that'll do it for us this week. Don't forget. Go over to David's uh, Facebook pages. Go over to his social media. Give him a like, follow, share. Don't forget to share the show tonight if you could, please. That helps us. Helps our supporters as well. And give us a like, follow, and share as well. We'll be back again next Thursday night, same time, 7.30. Y'all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Buck Bait, Better the Hunt, Rebel 6 Rubs and Seasonings, Easy Cut, Limb Walker Game Call, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Packer Mac, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Scent Blocker, Scent Lock, Copper John, and Stanislavski Release Aids. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.